amber is considered to be a gemstone. But what it really is, is fossilised tree resin. The origins of amber make it quite interesting for a number of different branches of science, as well as for jewellers. Because amber is formed from the resin of trees, it doesn't actually have a specific chemical formula. Instead, it's created from chains of organic molecules, some of which are extremely sticky. The resin normally emerges from the trees when the bark of the tree is actually damaged in some way, similar to the way in which we bleed. The sticky resin solidifies and forms a protective coating over the damaged spot. However, whilst trees are often damaged by the weather, even large animals, insects can also damage the tree. Alternatively, the insects can just attempt to make use of a recently damaged part of the tree and attempt to bypass the normal defences that the tree has. The stickiness of the tree resin as it emerges, though, can actually trap insects attempting to burrow into the tree, preventing the insects from escaping. Eventually, as more and more resin emerges from the tree, it can completely surround and envelop the insect. Then the resin starts to harden and form a protective layer for the tree. At the same time, it may have managed to trap insects or an other material like a pollen and perfectly preserve these items inside the pocket of hardening resin. Now with so many trees creating so much resin over millions of years, we thought there would be huge quantities of amber around. This isn't the case. Most of the resin that's produced isn't that chemically stable. The action of sun, rain, or even fungi can degrade the resin over time. This isn't a problem for the tree, as by the time it degrades, trees normally manage to repair the original damage. Much like the skin under a scab will repair itself, the scab doesn't need to last too long. Now, some trees, especially pine trees, can produce resins which contain isoprene. And these rings uh, will actually be fairly stable. Others can produce uh, phenol, and these are even more stable. In the other forms, but even if these left exposed for too long, they will start to degrade. In order for the resin to be converted into amber, it needs an environment where it won't degrade. Most commonly, this is an area free from oxygen, normally found by burying the resin somehow. If the resin in its early stages will actually float, it can actually be carried downstream and then buried in layers of clay sediment. Alternatively, the trees can be buried by a glacier or some other event. Now once it's been buried, the heat and pressure of the new environment can convert the resin into amber, with the molecules within the resin joining up to form longer and more stable chains, and the turpentine-based chemicals being driven out of the stone. The resulting amber is normally yellowy or orange colour, but different impurities or even origins of the resin can result in amber which is almost any colour, including green, red, blue and even black. The resultant stone has been used for thousands of years in jewellery. However, amber's ability to trap and perfectly preserve specimens of plants and animals from millions of years ago means that many branches of science are now using amber to help understand the history of life on Earth.